Welcome to the Vol Report, brought to you by Bassey Lawn and Garden. Man alive, it's worth the drive. And uh, Craven Wings as well, tell you more about them. As we're loaded up with Jacob Warren is here. And Jacob, you know I like you. Yeah. But I'm I'm a little disappointed. I thought the mustache thing was going to stick with the tight ends, and you're already going full beard. There it is. Man, I don't know. I We talked about it before the show. I might let it go, man. I might, I might take it back down just because all my guys are still doing it. They're all going strong. And I kind of feel bad, especially as the older guy, as a leader. I kind of feel bad leaving them, leaving them out to dry and not, and not doing it with them. But um, we'll see. Maybe next week I'll, I'll be rocking it. <laughs> we'll have to. Only time will tell, I guess. With the mustache and the beanie that you were sporting, it wasn't a beanie, uh, really. It was more like a toboggan. But yeah. you're kind of rocking. I, I couldn't tell if you were a security guard or an inmate in like a 70s jailbreak film. Or mm-hmm. something. The mustache. I got a lot of, of police jokes. You know, you look like a, you look like a police officer <laughs> with, the, with the mustache. You look like the sheriff. I'm like, well, I don't know. Sheriff's a really good football player as far as I'm concerned. You know what I'm saying? But um, no, nah, it's, it's a fine little thing. But whatever. We'll see if it comes back. Well, I, I tell you what, I don't know that they went mustaches, but they've gone for long gains. And that's yeah. your your running backs who just by everybody I talked to and Josh Heupel's addressed it publicly as well, are having an exceptional spring. How would you describe yeah. it? Man, yeah, exceptional is a good word. I think that the guys that needed to kind of show up and really take that step, I think, in their – I don't even want to say proving themselves, right? I think you you make it here, right? And you're you're on this this team. You obviously have a lot of skill and a lot of talent. Um, but guys that just really needed to step up and, and take on the role of, you know, being a guy that can go all through all three downs, right? And being a guy that can pass protect and can run and can, you know, break a big one. You know what I mean? Whenever the team needs it, we need a little juice, like somebody go make a play and you got a running back fighting for extra yards and, and getting first downs and all this stuff. So really all three of our younger guys, man, uh Dylan and um, Sean Bishop, who's a new guy, and then Cam Seldon, who's a new guy. Really, all of them really showing out um, in these live settings and these team settings where we got scrimmages and different things like that. So, well, you you mentioned Deshaun Bishop in particular. I mean, mm-hmm. here's a guy who just you know committed to Tennessee in December. I mean, it didn't. I didn't necessarily know that he was going to get a scholarship offer, and bam, three months, four months later, he's. Yeah. He's out there. That's a pretty quick transition, especially being a local guy like you are. Yeah, it's cool being a local guy, too, because I've obviously, like, heard about the kid and, and, and knew – kind of knew who he was, right? He was one of the top – if not the top rusher in the state, I'm pretty sure, like, you know, a couple years in a row. And um, you got to – like, you sit there and you're like, man, the kid has to be talented, right? Because obviously, like I say, one of the top rushers in, in the state, you don't just get to be that way without being super talented. and. So finally getting able to see, you know, his his work and his talent kind of showing up has been really cool. Do you like it uh, like it when the local guys do well? Do you kind of keep an eye out for them? Yeah, for sure. I think that it's, you know, I don't know. You got you kind of got to support each other just because, you know, there's there's not a whole lot of us, right? Like, you know, there's a lot of Tennessee guys and stuff, but there's not a whole lot of us that are truly from Knoxville that are just from, like, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes down the road. So, um you know, it's definitely something cool that, that we all have that it's kind of, you know, you take some pride in it. Um, so, yeah, I think I think it's great. Now, and uh, th- the name that I continually hear uh, throughout the roster is Dylan Sampson. He's one of the running backs that we I, w- I want to visit about because mm-hmm. I-, I thought he showed that spark electricity last year. So why can he be a more dependable, reliable guy than maybe sporadic duty? last year what is it about his approach his play um you get a guy that like that who you know all of most of our running backs are you know smaller framed guys right they're they're not super tall super whatever towering people so you get a guy like that that gets truly gets one off season in the weight room and you know with a good diet you know you know a good plan trying to go forth of putting on muscle and putting on a little bit of good weight right being able to get more explosive and, and just all those different things that kind of are just natural development for a young player. You're going to, you're going to see him take those next steps. You're going to see him break all those tackles. You're going to see him be able to, you know, take a, you know, take a shot from the side and keep his balance, which, you know, he's so good at all of our backs are really, really good at, you know, uh, you know obviously you watch Jalen Wright jump over somebody, land on one hand and then keep his feet and then get up. And then, you know, taking shots from the left, taking shots from the right and just their balance is, is incredible. So, um, yeah, I think just development in the weight room and, and has really taken his game to the next level. I would think 
pass protection by being around would have improved a lot. I'm I'm assuming with the offense that you guys run that everybody knows whether it's tight ends or running backs, pass protection is pretty important. 100%. Yeah, that's – man, that's the number one goal is to protect that guy. And, and I think that, you know, again, being in the weight room, getting stronger, being able to use your hips and use your power is super important for a running back because there's going to be times where, you know, either their guy's coming off the edge or, you know, they're getting the mic that's plugging in, in the A gap and they got to go meet him or even, you know, unfortunately it happens sometimes where an O-lineman might get beat, right? And then that running back's got to be there for for help and for support. And they've got to try to hold up a 300 pound defense alignment. And, you know, it's tough, right? So just being able to physically, you know, be ready for those, for those different things has been, obviously it's a challenge for us too, right? Tight ends are in the same boat. You know, that guy completely outweighs all of us. The D, you know, if it's like a D lineman coming, that's coming free. And so um, all of us just trying to, pitch in and try to protect the quarterback at all times is definitely, definitely a priority. I think most were surprised when Cam Selden showed up and he was immediately moved to running back. How, how did he accept that? How's he performed since? Man, I didn't even really realize that he wasn't a running back. If I'm being <laughs> honest, I didn't like, I don't know. Recruiting is recruiting to me. Like I, if I meet the guys when they're around, it's awesome. But um, man, he just came in and just kind of started to learn and starting to, you know, try to be the best running back that he can. And I think you see a lot of it. He was a wide receiver, right? Yes. So you see a lot of the open field, you know, awareness and just the way he runs with the ball. You can kind of tell like, oh, yeah, like this guy has been in space a lot, like understands where bodies are coming from and 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 is making dudes miss on the perimeter, kind of like a wide receiver would, right? Because that's what he's been doing. And, and so it's really cool to just kind of see the two kind of molding together and him trying to become, you know, a complete back. Whether it's him or Bishop, what would you tell them about being prepared as a running back as a freshman? Because obviously Dylan was last yeah. year. He was ready to go. You had some other guys that have gone elsewhere that weren't ready to go without mentioning yeah. names. What's the key to being ready as a running back in a physical position from day one? I mean, just like you said, being physical, right? Being able to be tough, right? I, I truly don't understand how those guys – get put in some of the positions that they're in, right, and just getting getting rolled up on or, or getting tabletopped over people or just got, you know, a bunch of dudes that are, you know, tackling them from all different sides. And it's just like, I don't know how they still stay healthy. I'm like completely honest. It's crazy to me. But just, man, being able to be super tough and being able to understand that when my moment comes, right, whenever it's, you know, whether it's late in the game or, you know, our, our, our guys are just gassed, right, the older guys are gassed and, you know, kind of beat up and now it's time to step up, right? And being able to not be, not even a, a, a liability, right? But just not not taking anything away from the offense, understanding how to operate within the offense and not slowing the tempo down, being able to, you know, go get those five yards on first down. That's all we need you to do. We don't need you to do nothing spectacular. Like if you, if you break a big one, that's great. And then at the end of the day, it's like, just kind of know how you play in, right? Go get that six yards on first down. I open up the playbook. We can kind of do it's a bunch of different things on second, third down, and then being able to, you know, be situationally aware. And if it's third and short, right? Like there's no going backwards. Like we're going forward and you got to find something. You got to just hit it. Cause that like just different things like that, right. That, you know, all these guys understand, right. They've been playing football their whole life, but um, when the moment gets big, right. And you're out there on the big stage, you got to really, really show up and, and you can't show your youth, right. You can't show your inexperience. You got to go out there and just, just be that guy. There was one aspect of, of Tennessee's pro day that stood out to me as far as preparing guys for the NFL. I want to get to that. I remind you, the Vol Report brought to you by Bassey Lawn and Guard, Man Alive. It's worth the drive. They've got the industrial mowers. They've got the commercial mowers, and they're all right there at Bassey Lawn and Guard, Man Alive. It's worth the drive. Whether you're coming in from Nashville, Knoxville, doesn't matter. Bassey Lawn and Garden is in Cleveland, Tennessee. So Gabe Judy Lawley said something that was interesting, the defensive back who transferred in. Yeah. And he said, one of the reasons I wanted to go to Tennessee is because they would prepare me for the NFL. Yeah. And then I see, I think there were about 50 scouts, because I guess one per team isn't enough. But there were about 50 scouts in the pro day. And right. you look at that guy, too. No, you look at that guy. <laughs> but anyway, so um, my how that narrative has changed since you got to Tennessee. Yeah. That people would choose that that was that was the reasoning that you would give about Alabama back in the day. But now to say I want to choose Tennessee because they'll get me ready for the NFL. Yeah. That's way different than when you signed up. No doubt. I think that that's just a testament to just the, the culture change and just the 
the trajectory of this program and how you know we are putting ourselves back on the map as somewhere that the scouts are coming to look right there should be scouts at every single practice and you know especially you have a guy like Hendon Hooker right a guy like Jalen Hyatt said like Darnell like there's going to be scouts at every single practice and it's just a matter of you know you're going to have that opportunity right if you you know, obviously, it's not just one day that you're looking to have a really good day at practice, but just being able to be consistent and just show really solid practice habits and um, obviously playing well on Saturdays is huge. But yeah, there's just a lot more eyes on us now than there than there used to be, I think. And um, this is a place that the eyes should be right. And that's how it's been in the past. But I think that the fact that we're able to have, you know, every single ter- every single team represented at the at the pro day and, and like you said, 50 plus scouts like that's where we're trying to get that's what we want to hear from from people is like yeah that's it's an opportunity to put myself in the best situation to go play in the nfl which is everyone's dream for the most part so um yeah definitely really cool now on on the flip side is everybody pulls out the the microscope to take a look at this offense take a look at Andon hooker because he's going into the draft yeah um guys are asked questions and one recently was Kirby smart talked about the quarterback position mm-hmm. you're smiling. You've, yeah. you've probably already heard this comment, but yeah. what, what did you make of it? Essentially I'm paraphrasing saying that there are other teams. And I think he was referring to you that run off tempo and that make it easier on the quarterback. And that's been said by scouts and such, but when it comes from a head coach in the sec, how does that strike you? Um, I don't know, dude. I really don't. I don't know how I feel about it. I don't think I'm just, I'm not mad about it. Like, I don't care what he says, right, about Hendon or about our offense. It doesn't matter, right? But at the end of the day, it's like if you just, man, just watch how, like, Hendon operates. Watch how Joe like and Nico operate at practice. Like, there is a lot on them. And, and Coach Hype even, I don't know if he had known what uh, Georgia coach said, about our offense or what, but he made the comment of like, we probably put as much, if not more on our quarterbacks than anybody else in the country. Right. And it might not seem that way, but you know, they're responsible for RPOs, pass run options, like different things, you know, checking runs and and seeing coverages and seeing pressures and, you know, just everything like that, that that's super, you know, it's normal for a quarterback to have to do that, but you know, almost kind of disrespectful to say that that they're not. There's not a lot put on them, or that it's a very simple game for them. Which, if you're good at it, like it seemed like it was really simple for Hendon, right? Because he was able to operate so quickly and so efficiently, and most of his guys were open most of the time. So yeah, it seemed really simple. But at the end of the day, it's the preparation that goes into it to be able to process at that speed and be able to make checks, be able to do all the things it is super impressive and um, definitely should not be discredited. Um, and yeah, I think that you see that now as, as the talks are coming out about Hendon, about how he's rising on the draft boards and, you know, he's impressing so many people with just himself, right. Just the way that he carries himself and his ability to be that guy for an offense, right. The guy that kind of puts everything on his shoulders can lead the offense, but also is super intelligent and knows enough to be able to, to make things right when they're not necessarily, you know, the best situation. So that's my thing on it. He can say whatever he wants, but <laughs> yeah, not- <laughs> even even th- there appears to me to be with with Hendon Hooker, and I'm going to compare it to Tim Tebow, and I know that you were a young man, a, a boy then at the time, yeah. But there ap- appears to be, regardless of the religious aspect or the spirituality aspect of it, mm-hmm. there there appears to be this. It's everybody's waiting for the other shoe to drop mm-hmm. because it seems like so many. Uh, athletes or public figures, I should say, d- d- like all of us have skeletons in our closet. And I always felt like th- people were waiting for Tim Tebow to get in some sort of trouble or do something wrong because he had sure. professed his faith. I get right. that same feeling with, with Hendon. Almost um, like people don't want to support him. Like they feel like something that like he's hiding something or, or what, like that's yeah, not really like, him. Yeah. Yeah, like there's no way he could be that good. The story is too good. Sometimes the story is just really good. Tim Tebow has gone, what, 35, 40 years and never – I don't know how old he is, but he's never gotten in in trouble. Sometimes the story is just that good. Sometimes it is, man, and sometimes you really just have a guy, a generational guy like that, that, man, checks all the boxes, right? They they talk about 
be an and player, right? Okay, this guy is this, and he's this, and he's this, and he's that, instead of trying to be, instead of being a butt player, right? You don't want someone that's, okay, they're this, they're this, but, you know what I mean? Like, but they have all these other problems and all these other issues, and they have some skeletons in the closet, and they got some unfinished business, and they got all this other stuff, like, that's not the case, man. Like, you, you truly can go down the line and just look at him and how he lives his life and what he does on the field and how he leads. You can ask anybody in the building, man. You could ask one of our janitors how the guy is, and they would be like, oh, yeah, he's great, man. He's always, you know, saying thanks and, and being thankful and all that stuff. So um, definitely a great, great example. Yeah, Kudos, by the way, to your uh, your 87 wing flavor. Yeah. Uh, they're craving wings. I'm strictly a Buffalo guy, and I got it just because of you. Yeah. Uh, a little bit of a lemon flavor. I was impressed. Did mm-hmm. you – you concoct that yourself a little spicy lemon pepper yeah i'm a, i'm definitely a, a buffalo guy but i think that you know they had kind of come to me and said this was back in man what 2021 i guess when i started working with them which has been a little while but um they came to me and were like hey listen like we want to do something and we obviously we got together and one of the first things that he said was like look man like we want to do a sauce for you and i was like oh wow that's like that's awesome well, he was like what do you think you'd want it to be and i was like oh, man i have no clue as like my two favorite flavors are you know, buffalo, like some sort of spicy buffalo and lemon pepper. Like, is there any way that we can combine the two or, or do some kind of something to kind of mix it in, make a little tangy, like spicy thing? And so they kind of, they whipped it up, whatever. They figured it out, figured out the, the secret sauce. And um, I love it. You know, I, I get it every single time I go, obviously. But um, had a lot of people that say that they really like it. And at the end of the day, it's like, man, I, I don't make it, so I can't take credit for it. But I'm happy you like it. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you did a good – I take credit for – uh the Dave Hooker margarita that's still floating around and the sushi roll, that restaurant closed. So I can't take, ah, can't can't take, take credit much. for that, yeah. but yeah. I will take credit for Dave Hooker's off the hook, big orange margarita. There How about go. that? There you go. Might as well. Well, say, that's more difficult than wings because you have to test the tequila that goes in it. So before you know it, your wife's picking you up at two 30 in the afternoon. Right. Like I, I was doing business. I swear. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> <it was> business. <laughs> um, name one thing that you would like to see out of the, the offense in the last week of spring camp. Um, just consistency. One, just put one whole week together where we can go out every single day, go out, whether it's pads, full pads, helmets, the spring game, whatever, just be consistent, man. And just be who you say you are. You know what I'm saying? Just go out there, Every single day, bring the same energy, you know, whether it's going good, whether it's going bad, get your feet in the ground, get lined up quick, play the next play, and we'll be all right. Great stuff as always. The Vol Report with Jacob Warren is brought to you by Vassy Lawn and Garden Man Alive. It's worth the drive. This has been a presentation of Off the Hook Sports.